This is for my ancestors. Mom, Dad, Grandmas and Grandpas, and beyond. It is from their sacrifices that I am here today, living a life I still dream about and love. But I am not of the past. I am of the future. I see art and experiences. I then abstract these experiences in a medium that communicates the experience best. Some call me a polymath, others a philosopher. I have been advertised as a singer, a poet, a nonfiction writer, a composer, a radical. I am most known as an artist. I am Vicki Molesky, an abstract experientialist. Abstract experientialism is a genre of art I have coined to explain how experience is abstracted into each artwork I create. Future experiences are what my art provides. I work on pieces knowing that they are not of the past. They are of the future. My work exposes reality for what it is, an experience we all share in making. Experiences of love, freedom, truth, and community are mixed into my work. I paint, draw, construct, compose, write, and perform. I make short films and create installations. My work involves love found in freedom, compassion found in action, and joy as a way of life. My curiosity drives discovery and questioning to create art, embracing human experiences as inspiration for the future. called Where Our Food Comes From that I've been working on for over a decade. The receiving jar collection focuses on dairy farming. Because we own our ancestral family's farm in Wisconsin, we are surrounded by dairy farmers. My Polish father grew up on the farm. My Polish grandfather and Polish grandmother were the ones who bought the farm. And of course, the grandparents and great-grandparents and going back as far as we can tell, we were always dairy farmers. And so it's nice to have the farm still in our family, although it is a lot of hard work. My grandfather had many stories about his love of the land, and he passed that love of the land down to my father and to us. My father loved the land so much that he decided to give it back to nature. And so half the farm is no longer used for agricultural purposes, but is left to give nature a chance to reclaim it. And nature has reclaimed it with a wonderful sugar maple, maple forest, some wonderful oak trees, and evergreens, and a great lake that is a reservoir and a sanctuary for many different species of flora and fauna. My receiving job collection, as you can see behind me, focuses mainly on the growing of the crops that feed the cows that produce the dairy milk products that we all know well. If you notice, all of them have a white background. This white background is the milk. It's made with calcium paint, which is a milk-based paint, and it talks more about the experience of understanding that these crops, hundreds of thousands of acres across the United States, are growing 
just to produce milk. The light is also a sense of the peacefulness and the silence that exists on the farm. We're surrounded by old order midnight farmers, horse and buggy people, and they definitely are quiet when they're working. The one who rents our farm invited me over to see them milking the cows. They have electricity, and so it's a 21st century milking operation. And inside the barn is the receiving jar. The receiving jar is a glass jar where all the milk from all the cows has to go through before it goes to the bulk tank. The receiving jar depressurizes the milk since it was sucked from the cows, sucked through the pipeline, and then the receiving jar splashes the milk into the jar so that it can go into the bulk tank and then go to the marketplace. On one down morning, I saw these yellow stripes that you see in the corn that's behind me. These yellow stripes are pollen that is growing up through the corn. This pollen will eventually become the kernels on the cobs of the corn that produce the protein that actually makes milk a complex protein nutrient for human diet. If you notice the first one here, these are two canvases and it's called full moon corn. The corn, of course, are the green lines with the yellow pollen lines in the center. And as you're looking at it, you might say this corn is pretty tall. But this corn is actually emergent corn that I saw and had an experience with. This emergent corn is maybe two to four inches high, but it was very striking to me. And the experience of seeing this yellow pollen stripe was quite remarkable. As an abstract experientialist, I try to abstract experiences I've had that are insightful or inspirational so that I can share them with others so that they might also have their own personal experience. The two canvases show uh, four corns growing and two of them are in the second canvas, which has a moon that's encrusted with mica rock, peridot, and quartz. The one reason I chose to do two canvases here instead of one is because I wanted to show how in this country the sky is so large and the land is equally large, but sometimes they seem separated because of how large they are. You can't encompass them sometimes with just a single glance. And so I wanted to show that sky and that the corn, only two of them, are reaching up to try to connect with the sky. During the full moon night here, right around the, where the full moon is, the sky can be just as white as you see it in these paintings. This one here is part of a series in my receiving jar collection. It's called Glenn's Corn. Glenn is, of, of course, our old order midnight mentor, and it is his corn that I am doing and showing you. Again, this corn is just newly emergent, two to four inches high, but it has this yellow stripe that is so remarkable. It's best seen during dawn, and that's when I first saw it. This is the first painting I did in this part of the collection because it was the first time I saw the yellow pollen stripe. I was walking at dawn, and I saw the yellow pollen growing. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that it was part of the leaf. I thought maybe it was just that day, or maybe it was just the dawn light, but it lasted for over an hour. And I saw it in preceding years that happened. I would walk, and I would see this yellow pollen stripe. It caused me to start to research it, and after three years, I learned that that is the pollen that's starting from the seed, going up through the plant, and eventually becomes the kernels of the corn. This is called Singing and Dancing, and it is uh, 16 by 20. Then in the canvas, gambling oil paints with a cassia milk background. The first two were 24 by 36 inches for each canvas. Again, linen canvases, cassia background, gambling oil paints. The second two part canvas that I have is the first quarter moon. Now I did all the, all the different kinds of moons. So I did the first quarter moon, the second quarter moon, third quarter moon, fourth quarter moon, full moon and new moon as two canvas uh, series. 
again with the casting in the background, the oil paint in the front, and here, three of the cords are actually touching the moon. It was a moment I saw when I was resting on my back on the grass watching the stars, and I looked over and I saw the yellow column strike. This was dark night because it was just the first quarter moon, but it was a wonderful sight, and I saw how the leaves of some of the corn intersected with the moon. The moon, of course, is encrusted again with the mica stones, the peridot, and the quartz rocks. The last part of the series that I'll show you is another one of Glenn's corns. It's a 16 by 20 canvas that's linen. It has the casting background and the gambling oil paint in front. Uh, it shows that yellow pollen stripe that's so remarkable to me and such a, a wonderful piece of information to learn how the seed holds all of that information for the plant to grow. It's surrounded in a barnyard frame and it is, of course, one of my favorites. And this is one that is not for sale with the rest are. I'm glad that you listened today. I'm Vicki Molesky, abstract experientialist artist. I'm honored to be doing these videos for the Chicago Public Library's Polish-American History Month. And I do hope that you have a nice day.